Hi, and welcome to the 2018 Paper 1 of the Leave Insert Ordinary Level uh, Question 3. <clears throat> That's in Section A. Now, this part is a 10D, so there's a lot of marks going, okay, uh, different uh, breakdowns. So let's see what we're, we're dealing with. That's uh, Question 3, Part A. Solve the equation 2x to the power of 2, or 2x squared, minus 7 times x minus 3 is equal to 0. So it is an equation, okay, it's gone equal to 0, so we can, we can solve it. Now, if you recognize this, because there's a power of 2 as the biggest power, it's quadratic. Okay. Now, quadratic would always have two answers. In this case, I know from just experience, when they say give each answer correct to two decimal places, that the fast method won't work. Okay. And the fast method would be where you open up two brackets and you're trying to find the factors that way. Um, so this is going to have to use the quadratic formula, which you'll find in the math tables. I provided it here. Now, I should have said at the beginning, uh, I suggest you just pause the video and have a go. Uh, if you can't get it, well, then we'll show you on the next page the, the answer and we'll go through it. If you can get it, and this is something you should be able to do, solving quadratics will appear numerous times in the paper. Um, now, we can, if you want to set notes that I'm working off, just send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com, and that email should be in the description below. So I'll go straight to the answer because it's worked out. So I've written out the quadratic here. Now, below that, I've written out the general form of a uh, quadratic equation, okay? Now from that, I can use it to identify what the A value here is, is two, the B value is negative seven, and the C value is three, and I've written them down here. Then I've taken the formula, okay, again, it's in the math tables, and I've written it here, and I'm going to put the different values of A, B, and C in the appropriate place. So I'm gonna put the negative numbers in in brackets, in fact, I think I put all the numbers in in brackets in this scenario. Uh, the reason to put the negative numbers in in brackets is to remind yourself so you need to multiply it by the sign uh, in the formula. So if I put it in here, it's minus times minus 7, the plus or minus symbol, all to be square rooted, uh, minus 7 squared, minus 4 times a, a times C, which is 2 times negative 3. All divided by 2 times A, which is A is 2, so it's 2 times 2. Now go over that carefully if, you're not, if it's not making sense, and just see that wherever the letter is, I put the appropriate number. So instead of B, I put negative 7, Instead of C, I put negative 3, etc. Now you're almost there, okay? I can do under this big square root, I can use the, the calculator. It should always work unless it's a complex numbers question. Um, and I've actually, I've done it by hand here just to show a breakdown. So the minus times, remember the brackets mean multiply, negative 7 minus by minus the plus. That's where the plus 7 comes from. Now underneath the bracket, I've done the minus 7 squared. Remember, minus 7 squared is minus 7 times minus 7. So it's plus 49. Okay, you can use your calculator to check that if you want. Okay, that's where I get that. Now, the plus 24 is a triple multiplication happening here. So it's minus 4 times 2. Okay, that's minus 8. Times negative 3. Okay, or minus 3. So minus 8 times minus 3 is going to be a plus. 8 3 is a 24. That's where I get that. Now, the bottom line there is just 2 times 2, which is 4. Now, this is the next step. All I'm doing is adding the 49 and 24, and I got 73. And at that stage now, I can't really do much more, so I'm going to split it into its two parts. This plus or minus represents the two different factors, so it can go with the plus version or the minus version. Okay, now that stage I just use the calculator, okay, and I got uh, 3.89, and I've rounded it already to two decimal places, and this other version here, um, I rounded it to negative 0 0.39. So the both expressed the two decimal places. So I've satisfied that part of the question, okay? And that's your job done. Now, on a graph, and I haven't got to put in here, but that, those two points represent where the graph crosses the x-axis, at those two points, okay? So that's part A. Now, part B here, okay, is uh, solve the simultaneous equations below to find the value of A and the value of B. Now, there's two different ways of doing this. One is called the substitution method. The other is called the elimination method. Neither is better, okay, it just depends which one you prefer. Um, I prefer the elimination method, okay, it's just kind of the, the one that I learned off in school personally, uh, although the substitution method can be just as easy. Now, the, the basic just behind this, let's say I was going to call this equation 1 and 2, okay. Now, if I look at equation 1 on its own, 2a plus 3 times b equals 15. There's two unknowns, I can't solve it. Now, if I look at equation 2, there's also two unknowns, so I can't solve it. If you notice, they're the same unknowns in both equations, one and two. So if I could somehow 
get rid of either A or B, uh, I could then solve it. And that's where the methods come in. So with the elimination method, you're going to try, in, well, it doesn't matter which one, A or B, I'm going to try to get rid of the Bs, okay, then leave the As on their own, and that equals something, and find out what A is, then use that value of A to find the value of B. With the substitution method, you're, you're rearranging one equation and subbing it in, and you, I go through both methods, okay. So the substitution method here, I've gotten the two um, statements or equations written out. Now, I'm going to look at and go, how could I make either the A's or the B's cancel? Now, I'm choosing to go with the B's here because it just looks simpler. I only have to change the bottom line. And if I could make that equal in size, but opposite in sign, they will cancel if I join the equations together. So I've done that by multiplying by negative three. So the top equation, the top line here, or like a line, the top um, equation uh, stays the same. So it's not changed here. But the second equation, I'm multiplying all the terms in that equation by negative 3. So 5 times a by negative 3 is negative 15a. b by negative 3 is negative 3b. And negative 8 by negative 3 is, is positive 24. So it's been changed, but all it's been is tripled. Okay, now I've changed the signs and tripled it. But I've been consistent by doing it to every single term. Now if I combine the two equations, well, these two things are going to cancel. Okay. Three apples take away three apples is no apples. That leaves just the A's. So negative 15A take away, or sorry, add, add to that 2A, I get negative 13A. And I'm going to 24 plus 15 gives me 39. So negative 13 times some number equals 39. Obviously that number has to be negative three. Now I'm going to find it, I algebra, I move the 13, the negative 13 across the equal. Now what happens is the operator that matters here is multiplication. It's negative 13 times a. So when I move that across the equal, it becomes the opposite operator, which is divided. So the, the sign doesn't change in that because it's the operator multiplication to division that's happening. Put that to the calculator, you get negative 3. So I now know what a is, okay? So I can use either equation to find out what b is. Now I'm picking the second equation, the original, because just because it's, it's e it looks easier to me. You could use the top equation, make absolutely no difference, you get the exact same answer. So I have 5a plus b equals negative 8. Okay, now we found out that a was negative 3. So if I put that in, this is now an equation of one unknown. So it can be solved. So remove brackets. So it's negative 15 plus b equals negative 8. If I bring the 15 across, it was being um, subtracted on the left side. It become added on the far side. That's where I get this statement. Uh, b equals negative 8 plus 15. So that just represents the number 7. So a is 3, say negative 3, b is positive 7. Job done. Now if I want to check it, I can put those two numbers back into either equation. And you should end up with the left-hand side equal to the right-hand side, proving that's correct. And that's the substitution method. Now the elimination method, similar, okay. Again, I'm trying to get rid of one of the unknowns. So I've taken, now, just for, for space reasons, I've taken one of the equations already. To my mind, the second equation looks easier, okay. Um, because I'm not going to have to end up messing with the, with the 3 in front of the B. So I'm going to rearrange this for B. So I'll bring the 5A across, and you end up with B equals negative 8, negative uh, minus 5A. So that's a statement for B. Now, with the other equation, okay, the simpler equation, the, the simpler with the other equation, I'm going to put that uh, value of B in instead. So if we go across, it's 2A, so 2A plus... 3 times b, now remember b, we realized was minus 8 minus 5a. So that's this here. And that equals to the 15, which is here. So everything's okay. We haven't lost anything. We've just substituted a different expression for b, which we found from the second equation. If you look across now, this is an equation of one unknown. Now a might appear twice, but it's the same unknown. So it's going to move left to right and remove brackets. End up with 2a, uh, take away 24, take away 15a, equals 15. Hopefully that's not too, um, going too fast, but just go slow over it. You'll see that the multiplications are correct. I've now moved the, um, well, I've actually added or subtracted the 2a minus 15a, got minus 13a. At the same time, I brought the negative 24 across the equal. It's changed to a positive going across the equal. So that gives me the statement negative 13a equals 39. And just like the last question, bring the minus 13 across, 
A was being multiplied, now it's being divided. The sign doesn't change, they end up with negative three. Now, to finish off, I'd have to do the same thing as over here, okay? Um, but I'm not gonna bother doing that again um, because I'm kind of out of space. But if you do that, you end up with the same thing, B equals seven, and that's the answer. Okay, so this should be the end of uh, question three. Okay, I'll see you on question four. Thank you very much.